got the presentation running. Um, Nadania will tell us something about how to work with glass, and stage is yours. Good evening, my name is Nadine Idris. I'm from California, but I've been living in Europe for 15 years. I used to live in Paris, and now I've been in Berlin for seven years. In 2009, with seven friends, we put together this AFAO Association, which became nonprofit in 2010. And last year, in 2011, we opened the very first glass blowing studio in Berlin. So Studio Glass has a young history. It's only 50 years old. It started in 1962 by an American um, named Harvey Littleton, who was actually inspired by a German named Erwin Eich, who was working, who works, he's still alive, in um, Bavaria, in a little town called Frauenau on the Bavar in the Bavarian forest on the Czech border. And Erwin comes from a long line of glass blowers in his family. They have a, they have a factory, the factory Aish in Frauenau. And Erwin, in around 1958, decided he wanted to make his own free form sculptures and made these wonky sculptures and then painted them. He actually studied painting in Munich. And Harvey Littleton, on a trip to Germany, in the 60s, in the beginning of the 60s, met Erwin and was inspired. And you have the birth of the Studio Glass movement. So Studio Glass means a small glass blowing studio, which is something completely different from production, which you find in factories. And I like to make this def definition because a lot of people get confused and actually with us, they think that we're making a product and we're not, we're working with artists. So last year around November, I started ordering the equipment from Italy and we started setting up the electricity and doing everything by hand. Um, the only objects that we actually, are the only machines that we actually bought were the glass melting furnace which is a 180 kilo uh, glass melting furnace. The piece on the, le on the left of it is called a glory hole. <laughs> and this is actually a product of the studio glass movement. It's a reheating station. When you're working with glass, you have to keep it at a temperature of 900 degrees and the glory hole helps you do that. The furnace is burning at 1,200. So we bought the glory hole and the furnace from Italy and everything else we actually either found on the street or um, uh, asked for donations. And we, we, built our, we built a lot of our own equipment. We also ran um, a fundraising campaign on the internet on a website called Indiegogo, which helped us pay for a lot of the materials, um, the blowpipes, the tools. And um, for every donation, somebody got a card. This is somebody in Bremen who gave us some money and they put it on top of the Stadtmusikanten. So December 9th, 2011, we inaugurated Berlin's very first glass blowing studio. We made a ribbon out of glass and cut it. And we took the very first gather. This is the very, very first time that glass is being blown in the city of Berlin, which is kind of strange to imagine, but it's true. And this is Sebastian taking a class. Um, and this is actually how I got to know him. And thank you very much for inviting me to speak at this conference. Um, we, uh, at this, in our studio, we work with artists and we also teach classes, um, all levels. This is a beginner class. And these are um, three artists, Hyo Ming, Jeff Ballard, and Torsten Roch, and they are making sculpture for a Canadian artist named David Armstrong Six. And that's David. <laughs> and then we also had an artist in residency program, um, or we have an artist in residency program, and this is Patricia and Use. Use is from the Netherlands, Patricia's from San Francisco. And anything is possible with hot glass, including. <laughs> 
<laughs> experimentation like this. Um, David wanted to make some precise cubes, so we asked him to make a mold. We told him, do not use MDF. <laughs> and of course, he used MDF, and this is what happened. <laughs> Um, one thing about glass blowing, which is, uh, which is very special, is you cannot do it by yourself. It's really teamwork. You need at least three people to make one object. And here we are with the artists in residence. Of course, there's um, five people, but we needed all five just to make this one long sculpture. It was really fun, actually. We also do a youth program. Um, we're working with other AFAOs which have youth programs and we bring them into the studio and we teach them for one week. We have a glass lab and when we finish the glass lab, um, they actually donate some of the pieces that they make and we sell them in an auction and they take the money and they choose another charity to give the money to. So we're teaching them um, to work together to work with glass, of course, and as well to be philanthropic because people give us money as donations and we want to sort of teach people that idea that things can actually run in this way when we look out for each other and help each other. So this is some of the objects, are some of the pieces that they make. So you can learn quite well in five days. Um, Glass blowing is uh, thousands of years old. Uh, it was, um, rumor has it, that it was developed by some Phoenicians on a beach back in, I don't know what, BC, 5,000 BC. They were having a barbecue and, um, no, they weren't having a barbecue, but they were trying to melt. Um, they were trying to light a fire and they lit it. They had some cauldrons and they lit them on the sand and they were boiling their water and apparently there was liquid glass. The sand was melting and there was molten glass. So um, it's thousands of years old. This is a picture of um, Ramsey al Nach, who comes from the al Nach family and they have an old, old um, glass studio in Hebron in um, Israel. I was there in April. And that's him working. It's uh, really nice because the, in the Middle East, they still sit and they roll everything on their, on their knees. And they work, they work on their lap. The blowpipes are very short versus our blowpipes, which are around one meter 60. The tools are centuries old. They have not changed. Everything is exactly as it was whether it's factory or studio or in the Middle East, Ramsey is using the same tools. So of course, nowadays, they're um, in the glass scene. They're also trying to take it to a more technical level. And this guy, Marcus, he came up with this um, solar, it's a solar powered 3D printer. And uh, in Europe, in Denmark, every four years, there's a really important conference called the European Glass Context. And this year there was a European Glass Context. And he won the award for the emerging artists. Um, it's really incredible what he does is he takes these solar panels. He's gone out, here he is in the Egyptian desert and he takes these solar panels and um, the glass, he like directs the light onto the sand and is melting the sand with the heat of the sun and creating little, this little bowl. It's very, like as far as the bowl and the texture of the bowl, it's very, it's very rough, of course, but still it's incredible that he's able to do this. And there is as well um, 3D printing, but um, glass is glass and it can't be cooled in, in, uh, in regular, it has to be cooled at a very specific rate with specific temperatures. And this is called the annealing process and um, so even with a 3D printer, and this is printing layer by layer, you still have to anneal it. So you're not even saving time with a 3D printer. It's just kind of, it's almost like a gimmick in a way, in my opinion. 
because, um, yeah, you still need to anneal it for at least eight hours. So short and sweet, we were formally in Mitte in the Strasburger Strasse and where our um, building just was sold. So this month, in fact today, I just signed the papers and gave back the keys in Strasburger Street and we're moving to um, Provenstrasse in Vetting. So if anyone here is interested in ever working with glass, please contact me. Um, we will start teaching classes again in February. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Are there questions? There is one. Please wait for the mic. Do you work in different kinds of glass? Um, different kinds? <laughs> Sorry, thank you. Different kinds meaning like uh, borosilicate or... Uh, yes, different we, compositions. Different composition. We work, our glass melting oven is um, melting a coefficient 96, which is a soft glass, so it's quite, and it's quite slow. That means it doesn't get hard um, very quickly, so you don't have to keep running to the reheat station. And um, yeah, it's it's we don't work with borosilicate. Borosilicate is a very stiff glass, and usually you work um, with a flame, a table, um, a torch, and you make um, scientific or in a factory, and they're making the the pirate what's known as pyrex glass for cooking and whatnot. Any more questions? Seems not to be the case. No? Well, thank you. Okay, thank you again. Um, this was the last, last talk for the day, not the last day of our event, of course. Um, there is a, some rumor that there is a party and uh, uh, there should be um, um, a placard of it at the cash desk. So there should be a poster with some detail information. I don't know it, I just heard it. Um, also, if you want to enjoy Berlin, there should be some of the traditional Christmas markets still open. Not every market is open, they're mostly closed on, uh, on Christmas, but some are still open until January. Um, otherwise, I would be happy to see you here tomorrow morning, and we will continue our conference. See you then.